Good morning, listeners. This is Captain Dave Jackson coming to you from sunny, I mean very sunny, Hendersonville, Tennessee. And today I'm very, very thrilled to have with us Ariel Rivera. Ariel, you've got so much going on in the insurance industry. We're going to, this could take us hours and hours, but we're going to have to <laughs> condense it all down into less than an hour and, and you can drop your wisdom on us. We appreciate you having on. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. It's, a, it's an honor. I promise I'll try to keep it short. Um, like many of you know me, I can talk. So, but yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll keep it short and sweet. And listen, before we begin, I just want to thank you for everything you're doing for the industry. Um, people don't realize the amount of work it takes to build something like you have. So congratulations to you. And we're just honored to have a great guy like you leading us, Mr. Captain. Appreciate it. Your words are very much appreciated. So let's start from the very beginning because there's could be listeners that have know nothing about Ariel. Um, and I know, you know, I've known you for several years, but let's start from the beginning. Where'd you grow up? All right, so I'm originally born and raised in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Um, kind of what yeah. I thought. Yep, yep. yep. I'm 100% Puerto Rican, as they say. I've been in the insurance industry for 17 years now. When I was little, okay. I did a lot of sports. I'm a huge sports fan. Um, I suffer a lot through COVID. Thank God nothing bad happened. Everybody's safe and healthy, but there were right. no sports. So no. It was like, oh, come on. Complete withdrawal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it was like, a, you know, like you just mentioned, just a withdrawal. But yeah, I did sports as I was little. I, I'm always, ve- I always been very interested in building things and creating things. And I went to college. I did a, an exchange program. I went to the University of Puerto Rico, did an exchange program at the University of Massachusetts, UMass Amherst. Um, so that's where I learned my love and passion for the Northeast. Uh, I have great friends and family up there. And I came back to the University of Puerto Rico. I wanted to transfer back to UMass because I loved it so much. Um, it wasn't so good for my grades, just so you know. I went to UMass with like a 3.3, came back with like a 2.8 or something. So <laughs> that just tells you how much fun I had. But anyways, came back, went back for my last year of college. Uh, I wanted to be an attorney. Uh, actually, my dream was to be a congressman. And I thank God every day I'm not that um because i'm very happy where i am and Boy, i thank you too for not being in politics oh yeah oh yeah so there's many other good things we can do and help others uh, just by running an insurance agency and being involved in the industry so yeah long story short came back i saw a sign a flyer this was back in the early 2000s um you know it said work very little manage your own time make a lot of money john hancock right and that was you know <laughs> A life carrier. A life carrier. That was very catchy. You can imagine a 21-year-old kid looking at that and saying, huh, I want to work very little. I want to manage my own time. I mean, I want to do whatever I want to do. And I want to make a lot of money. Well, as we all know, it's not true. (laughs) you got to work a lot. you got to bust your ass for 10 years. Sorry for that. Um, You know, and then after you build something special, then you get to keep building, developing, and relax a little bit. But for, you know, your first five, 10 years, you're going to work very hard. I started in John Hancock, went to their career agent program. At that time, I was blessed enough to one of the agents, actually one of the managers there, comes up to me and he goes like, how old are you, kid? I'm like, I'm 21. At that time, I was 22. I'm sorry, I'm 22. And he goes like, well, do you have any kids? I'm like, no. Like, are you married? I'm like, no, I have a girlfriend, which is my my wife now, by the way. <laughs> I have a girlfriend. Who do you live with? I live with my grandparents. Do you have a car? Yes, I do. Do you pay for a car? No, I don't pay anything. I just go to school, you know, go to college. I started my MBA at that time and I'm learning how to sell life insurance. And he was like, no, no, listen, keep selling life insurance, go out, get all your licenses and start your own agency. Never look back. I wish I would have done it. The guy was probably late fifties. And he was like, I wish I would have done this 30 years ago. Go ahead, do it. Best tip I ever had in my life. I think I saw the guy maybe eight years after that. I did John Hancock for a year, switched to the PNC side next year, fell in love with the hustle and the dynamics of PNC a little bit more than life. We still do life, very little. Um, we're licensed in every line of business, but it's PNC was just in my nature, right? I think I saw the guy eight years after that. I stop him in the middle of the street. I give him a hug. I said, thank you so much. Of course, back then I was a little bit thinner than I am now, but I already had a beer. I gained a little bit of weight. <laughs> he looks at me. He's like, who are you again? And I'm like, listen, sir, you did this for me and I could never thank you enough. 
And that was it. That's where it all started. That's where I founded my first agency at 20, uh, 22 years old in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And history has been written for the last 17, 18 years now. So that was Ariel Rivera Insurance. Yeah, that was Ariel Rivera and Associates. Um, Associates. Uh, yep, okay. yep. We had a we had an office. We had four producers, a uh, couple of CSRs, account managers, a claim specialist. So Puerto Rico is a little bit different than the market in the U.S. Of course, Florida it's a whole different entity. We can do another two hours different in Florida. Area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, I tell people Puerto Rico is a hard market, and then I um dumb enough because there's no other way I can find to go and expand and open an agency in Florida, right? So Puerto Rico's hard. I thought Florida was going to be easier. It turns out it's just harder. Um, you know, different challenges, but it's still good. So, but anyways, Puerto Rico, the, the insurance agency, right? It's all independent agencies. There's no captive. Well, there's one captive carrier. It's a local one, but independent agencies, I would say we serve kind of like as the back office of the insurance carriers. Whereas in the States, it's a little bit different. We're the first line of defense, kind of like underwriting and sales. And then the back office claims management and all that is done by the carrier. So, for example, in Puerto Rico, if you had an, uh, an auto accident, you call the agency. My claim specialist will talk to you, get the information, send it to the carrier. The carrier will open everything. We will go back to the client. So we will manage all that. So the servicing will show a lot. So you would have a, a small book of business and you will still need to have at least one, two, three, four people to manage it just because it's, there's so much servicing involved with the carrier specifically, right? And then, of course, there comes the Latino culture and the Puerto Rican culture where the client needs to talk to you. It's not that he wants to talk to you or whatever. He needs to talk to you. <laughs> so you got to have somebody answering the phone 100%. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the personal touch. It's very personal. So are the carriers in Puerto Rico, are they all domiciled there? Yeah, they're all domiciled in Puerto Rico. There's a, So there's no U.S. companies doing business also in Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, U.S. territory. Yeah, it's a U.S. territory. So we have big ones like Liberty, Chubb. Um, okay, yeah, okay, we have okay. a couple of the, the big ones. It's just they write different lines of business. So, for example, Chubb, uh -huh. they only write large lines. It has to be commercial property. I don't know, 10, 15, gotcha. 20 millions of replacement costs and above. Um, Liberty will write GLs, financial lines. AIG will write financial lines as well, cyber and that, those kind of policy. But most of the, you know, bread and butter, or as we call in Spanish, rice and beans, um, mm -hmm. comes from the local carriers, which we have, for example, MAPFRE, which is the big Spaniard carrier. It's an international one. And right. then we have a couple of the local ones, um, that they write most of the business. So look at it more like, I don't know if I'm doing the right comparison, but something like Kentucky or Wisconsin, where they have a lot of regional carrier and local right. carriers as well. Uh, Florida, same thing. Most of the carriers in Florida are local yeah. Florida carriers. Real good, real good example. Yeah. yeah. So that would be kind so, of so. In, so in Puerto Rico, uh, for purse lines, let's say, almost exclusively written by Puerto Rican carriers. Yes. So I would say personal lines. Gotcha. It's ninety nine point nine percent. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, Ariel Rivera and associate still in business today. So back in 2020, I was blessed enough, uh, with one of my good friends from the insurance industry, he's called Manuel Font. They own him and his brother are two young guys, second generation, early forties, and they own one of the top three or top five, a hundred percent Puerto Rican independent agencies in the island. I mean, they're huge. They have two locations, 30 plus employees. He acquired my agency, he acquired my team, and everybody went on with them. And then basically I stay with them. Basically we're working now we're between Florida and Puerto Rico. We help them to manage all their clients that have operations or properties in the state, especially in Florida. And then everything that they work that was from my agency, they keep working it on Puerto Rico. When that whole okay. thing happened, it was super, it was eye-opening for me, right? Because now I'm free up of the... Puerto Rico agency, and that's where I got very involved and passionate about mergers and acquisition advisory, about the marketing side. That's when I opened the podcast, and that's when I decided I want to create something special to help independent agencies across the country, and especially Puerto Rico and USVI, and that's when I created Fun Insurance Solutions, because insurance is fun, right? We love insurance. <laughs> Our clients don't think it's fun, but we do think it's fun. <laughs> 
So fun, you f- well, through fun, you write um, coverage to the U.S. Virgin Islands? No, 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 no. So through fun, no. all okay. we do is marketing, podcasting, integration, and M&A oh, advice. Gotcha. Yeah, it's only, gotcha, it's gotcha. full, it's not licensing anything regarding insurance. We do not write any policy. Our whole purpose is just bring products and provide them, you know, to help agencies across the country. Because one thing we found, and as I travel across the country, just like you do for conferences and things like that, a lot of the great products and vendors, especially that are available for us, they're not, I mean, they just, I believe that they're just tapping on 30% of the industry. I mean, there's Mm -hmm. so much more they can do. And there's different channels like PIA or the big guy or the IOA or these different organizations, but there's still 10, 20,000 more agencies out there that we're not being able to reach to. So how do we get there? You know, whether it's because they are from the Latin American Association of Insurance Agents or things like that, the same problem that we have on the mainland, we have it in Puerto Rico and USVI. A lot of the products, we're supposed to be using them anyways, but for some reason, sometimes it's because of the language barrier, because even though everybody speaks English, uh, you know, insurance professionals in Puerto Rico, a lot of the people, the main language is still Spanish. So sometimes they think, well, this product might not be helpful and they don't realize it can. So how do we bring it down? How do we market your product and help you grow your product and then help our independent agencies just keep building and growing with the use of technology, for example? Technology in Puerto Rico, it's five, eight, maybe 10 years behind. So it's, and, and I'm meaning, I'm talking about the independent insurance agency side. So, right. you know, you talk about- Why, why do you think that is? Because what I just said, a lot of the vendors, you know, main, of course, the large agencies, $30 million plus in revenues or $10 million plus in revenue, they they do use, you know, the great technology of Applied or Vertifor or things like that. But then when you go down to the smaller mom and pop shop, there's no access to technology, not because they don't want to have it. It's just nobody has showed them. So nobody has hmm. introduced that technology to them. And that's when we decided by creating fun insurance solutions, we want to bring that technology and help all of them. There, there's got to be a better way. And one thing we tell our, you know, our sponsors and, and partners, it's like, listen, let's just bring this down. You can sell it across the mainland. Whatever product you have, if it's a good product, if I have tried it myself at my agency and if it works well, I know I tested it. I know I vetted it. I can tell everyone else you should give it a try. And one of the reasons we're behind is just for some reason, vendors and all those companies don't even go down to Puerto Rico or even USVI. So, right, right. Yeah, hopefully, we get more. Yeah. Well, it's good that you're bringing that to those folks who need it, um, because small agencies need automation, just or technology, just as much as the big guys, if maybe right. more, just to be able to compete, or you know be on the same level. So good for you to acknowledge that, recognize that and find a solution to bring it to them. That's very cool. Thank you. That's why it's called fun insurance solutions. (laughs) So 21 at age 21, your first day in insurance with John Hancock, right? Yep. Age 22, age 22 to be more precise. 22. So how many years now in the industry total for you? So it's going to be 18 um, in total between PNC and all that stuff. Um, okay. and I, it's funny, you know, you think about being 15, 20 years in the industry, oh, that's an old guy. And, um, right. you know, I'm in my early forties and one of the things is like, I'm a baby, I'm just getting started. I mean, I'm <laughs> trying to take all the knowledge I acquired in the last 15, 17, 18 years and just build around that. And that's one thing right. every Good year. You. And, and you know this cause you've been, you know, you've been in the industry for what now? 30 years, maybe. 44 years in July. Look at that. Yeah, I'm an old fart. No. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. When I started, I was still rate commercial and quoted with the little round thingy, which I forgot the name. Oh, my God. That's, yeah. I started with what that. What is that called? It's so old. The I wheel. Don't know. The wheel. We I just call it the wheel. Yeah. Yep. It's, uh, it's For some reason, I forgot the name. But yeah, when I started Me my too. first two, three years in the industry, again, this is still early 2000s. And I still quoted and rated GL with the wheel. So when I told people, when I tell people, it's like, I am young enough to help you and guide you and talk to you about technology and all that. 
but I'm old enough to understand how far the industry has come. Whereas when I started, there were no cell phones, mm -hmm. right? Or if right. there was one, there was probably the Palm or something like that. Right. Where have we, you know, how much have we grown as an industry? How do you quote a GL on a wonderful, you know, insured tech now in two seconds? Whereas before you had to look at that, calculate the rate, write it manually. I'm old enough to understand that. And then that's why right. one of my goals between the veterans in the industry and the younger generation, I feel I can help be the, the bridge, right? That gaps and to, to To fulfill that gap that goes between generations, whereas veterans is like, ah, I can't work with millennials, blah, blah, blah. I don't like them. And millennials is like, oh, this old guy or this old woman, it's just, they don't know how to do things. They don't want to listen to us. And I'm like, no, right. let's just meet halfway. There's plenty of good you're, we can do together. You're, you're what we call a tweener. A tweener. <laughs> you're in between. You're, you're a tweener. You're not a millennial. You're not a boomer. Yep. You're a tweener. <laughs> and uh, I consider myself uh, that's Gen a good C. point that's a good point and, yeah and I there you go myself Gen C I think it is the one previous to me I was born in 81 yep um yeah so yeah it's a, that in between some people say I'm still a millennial I have no traits or qualities of a millennial at least that's what I believe <laughs> maybe I do who knows but you embrace technology I do oh I love technology I'm I'm my train of thought is just like what you just mentioned a little bit back it's like we need automation especially smaller agencies you know i was called a mid-sized agency in puerto rico in florida i'm just a traditional mom and pop shop and if it wasn't for technology i'll be struggling really bad really bad we gotta have technology we gotta embrace automation no it's not designed to substitute anyone Technology and automation are built to help you and your team become better. That's my whole pitch, you know, my whole mentality. It's like build around that, use it, embrace it, but most importantly, make sure you use it. <laughs> Whatever you get, just right. use it. Right. Try to maximize the most out of it because this systems, and again, I'm not the biggest techie guy in the world. They're so complex and they have the capability of doing so much. But when we're out at the office, we're answering the phone, we're putting out fires every day, up and down, buying calls, he's pissed, buying calls, he's happy, we got to write certificates of insurance, we got to do many other things. But if we take the time to set up the technology properly, a lot can be done, a lot more. Right. Much more efficiently. Yep. I agree 100%. So your Florida agency, St. Augustine? So yeah, I'm in St. Augustine. The, the agency is home based in Jacksonville. Saint, Saint. So okay. it's, uh, yeah, St. Augustine is Northeast Florida and Jacksonville as well. Yep. Yep. Um, that's yep. why it's. How funny. did you land there? So that's a wonderful question. Everybody thought I was going to open in Orlando because Orlando, that's where. So you know how Miami, it's mostly Cubans, Venezuelans, and you know, a lot of Latinos down in Miami. Central Florida, there's a lot of them, but the, but it's. You know, it's, it's mostly Puerto Ricans, right? Because of the proximity, there's a nonstop flight to San Juan. Same thing happens for Houston, for Dallas, all those major cities in Texas. It's professionals, right? The, the doctors, the CPAs, the attorneys, engineers that are young ones, right? That are leaving the island. Most of them try to look for those specific, you know, uh, geographical points where they can get back home on just on a plane, right? right. Orlando, it is wild. I mean... All my respect to everyone in Orlando. I love Orlando, but the best thing I love about Orlando is Disney World, which I love to go with my wife and daughter. <laughs> but that's it. Insurance-wise, it's just wild because it's very crowded. There's a lot of agencies. Again, there's a lot of market there. But Orlando, to me, is just San Juan. San Juan is just... I would tell you there's probably, I don't know, 75, 90 agencies within a 10-mile radius in San Juan. So it's, mm. it's ridiculous. It's so much competition and it becomes to a certain point. Again, this was the mentality back 10 years ago. It was very cutthroat, right? And then throughout the years, we've been trying to change the message. What you've been doing with IOA, which is amazing. Let's collaborate. We're better together. Mm -hmm. Let's do, you know, it's, we don't need to kill each other. If a client wrote right, you a right. BOR, if a client wrote you a BOR, ask that client. Did somebody put a gun in your head? No. The client chose to sign the BOR, right? So ask yourself, don't don't go out. You know, of course, there's bad apples everywhere. I do get that. But don't go out sure. and say, 
you know, Captain Dave, he's horrible. He's the worst agency. He took away my client. No, look at yourself. Do some introspection. What happened? Mm -hmm. Why did the client BOR the account? Reach out to the client and let him know what happened. Let me learn from this. He could come back and say, no, the new agent, Dave Jackson, he's just my brother. I want to give my brother the visit. That's completely understandable. He can come back and say, well, I don't like that you don't respond to your emails or your calls within an hour. That has happened to many of us. It just happens. Sure, and what's, sure. what's reasonable is different. So mm -hmm. going back to Orlando, when I did the whole research about opening in Florida, Orlando was so crowded and busy. I'm like, I need something new, something better. So I was blessed enough to have my daughter's godparents. They recently moved after the hurricane to San Agustin, Florida. So we came to visit them. We saw the area, Northeast Florida, just for many of you that don't know, it's still very Southern. It's beautiful. There's the Southern hospitality and the area between San Agustin and Jacksonville and many other areas, everything in Florida is under construction. It's still very virgin, right? There's a lot of construction going on. I mean, when I started researching independent agencies back in 2018, in, in my area, in the counties I serve in Florida, of course, the biggest guy on the block was Billy Wagner. <laughs> so you can't compete with Billy. Um, and then you had the other big guy was Aleman, which is Luis Aleman, Aleman Insurance Agency. Apart from them two, I don't think there were back in 2018 more than 10 independent insurance agencies in a 30 mile is radius. Is that right? Is oh, that yeah. right? Huh. There were captives, wow. but they were not independent. Right. So I right. set up in San Jones County, which is the, San Jones County is very famous for the schools, right? So they're the number one county and school wise and education wise in the state of Florida. And I think it's and, one of the And you top. have a school age daughter. Yep. Yep. I have a school age daughter. My wife is a huge nerd and all she care about, she, I don't care where we live. We can live under the bridge, but my daughter needs to have a good education, right? So she was all about mm -hmm. schools. We visit her godparents. We saw the area, super family oriented, very southern hospitality. You still get the beautiful weather. As you can see, I'm wearing a vest because it was 92 on Saturday on my daughter's soccer game. It was 52 this morning. <laughs> so, so wow, it's it's crazy, but it's such a beautiful area. It's peaceful, and then coming after the hurricane we had, Maria in Puerto Rico, it was so busy, so wild. I got very sick. My heart. I got a lot of heart problems after that. I mean, it was nuts. I needed to slow down. And, and even though I was going to be very busy starting an agency, the lifestyle, I still needed to slow down. So I researched the whole area. At that time, they were building somewhere around 5,000 homes uh, in the next couple of years. As we're speaking now, in the whole area, they're building somewhere around 18,000 homes in the next 15 years. It is St. Augustine? In between St. Agustin and Jacksonville, yeah, St. Agustin, St. Okay. John, St. Jacksonville. So it okay. is ridiculous the amount of opportunity. And there's food, you know, there's a lot of fish in the ocean. There's food for everyone. Communities mm -hmm. are very involved. Businesses are very involved. Everybody respects each other. It's a, it's a, I would say it's a beautiful. It feels even almost like a bubble, right? So I look at the area. I saw the kids playing outside, which is how I was raised in the eighties, and I'm like. This is where I want to come. My wife was like, that's perfect because this is the school my daughter has to go. And I'm like, let's just start an agency. You know, let's I'll start the agency here and serve San Jones County. But we serve the whole state because we speak Spanish. So we do right. serve Central Florida, um, Southeast Florida. We do very little business. We do business with very little in the panhandle. Um, just mm -hmm. because of like many other agencies, we have uh, the access to the carriers. It's just so tough because... You know, the market right. right now, anything Central Florida and below all the way down to Miami, there's very limited carriers. Um, then the Northeast, it was everybody's favorite area. It was beautiful. Everybody wanted to write here. And now it's getting very strict in terms of underwriting guidelines. But you know what? It is what it is where there's challenge. There's opportunity as well. Uh, I'm a true believer of that. And, and we just push hard and we work hard and I pick up the phone and I make phone calls and then... There's a lot of everything that we all have to do as agency principals as well. And But you know what? The main thing is just being there for the clients and the communities. And so far, we have been received with open arms. So I'm blessed for that. Awesome. And that is um, Deer Insurance? Yep. Deer Insurance Agency. 
Um, the reason is there. I didn't want to keep the tradition of having my name um, of Ariel Rivera and Associates, which is what I thought about opening here when I expanded. But I wanted something different. I wanted something meaningful, meaningful and I wanted something that would represent or show our pillars, right? Our core values. What do we stand for? And deer, even though the logo is the head of a deer, um, the actual meaning of deer insurance agency, deer stands for dedication, empathy, excellence, and respect. So that's why I created uh, Deer Insurance Agency because I wanted to show the new communities we're about to serve what our core values are. And this took months, a couple of wine, bottles of wine, maybe a couple of drinks of rum and coke as well <laughs> <laughs> to get to that point. Um, and I'm, you know, Puerto Rican all, rum. Oh, yeah, of course. Don Q. Always Don Q. Not Bacardi. Oh, don't drink Don Bacardi. Q. Yep, we you don't drink Bacardi. Ah. I'll, <laughs> I'll get you some Don Q and you'll know the difference. <laughs> I see. So what was the first day of deer insurance? So we started, so first day, the official first day was 2019. I would say August 2019. I think so. Yeah. So yeah, August 2019, either August or or September 2019. um, I was already licensed in Florida since 2015. I used to do Mm -hmm. business here through another agency of a friend of mine. Um, but then he sold to one of the big M&A mega agencies, as we call them. And, mm-hmm. and then after that, that's what, that was the perfect turning point for me because that was, okay, do we go through another agency or do we open our own one? And that's when right. we decided to take the step. What was it like getting carrier appointments at that time? Listen, I don't In know. Florida. In Florida, <laughs> I can tell you right. one thing. Right. I can tell you one thing. It was one of the hardest things I have ever done in my career. I am not the type of guy that I'm going to be like, oh, I am Ariel. You know, I teach for the National Alliance. I do this. I'm involved in National PIA, blah, blah, blah. I'm in different boards, National. I'm like, listen, um, I created a presentation, which I encourage every independent agent. You want to get a carry appointment? Do a simple presentation or PDF, uh, you know, a couple of pages, even a one pager. Letting people know your agency and what you can do for the carrier, right? A lot of carriers tend to be selfish, not in a bad way. It's like, what are you going to do for me? And that's a whole conversation right. because I have some sure. you know, uh, thoughts about that. But it was so hard because it, everybody thought of me. It's like, you're just a brand new scratch agency. I'm like, yes, I am. But I'm an agency owner with 16 years of experience or 15 back then. And I built this agency with this book of business. Um, still, we don't care. <laughs> you're in Florida. You're the new Your kid Puerto Rican experience didn't matter? No, so a couple of them did. I had to push hard, but it took me a couple of calls and emails. And I would love to write for you. So Puerto Rico, I built my agency with eight carriers, right? We have one, two, three, four, five. And then, you know, seven, six, seven, eight, those were the last ones. But we built a relationship. So I'm... I'm I'm a true believer that relationships and intention is everything. So Mm -hmm. I try to create relationship. I research my carriers and accept, for example, bankers insurance. All the carriers we have appointments with, they're all in good standing. They're all financially sound because it took me months of research saying, okay, I want to ride with ABC carrier. Why do I want to ride with them? Okay, they're A-rated Demotech or AMBS, either one. Let me look, you go online, and that information is public, go to AMS or Demotech, sure. and you're going to find their underwriting profit or loss, right? Carriers right. that are financially sound, those are the ones I want to partner with. I don't want 30 carriers in Florida, okay? The, the, those mm-hmm. are for the big guys that have 50 employees, and they can write with 30 carriers. No, no. I want to write with 5 to 10 carriers, maybe 12, 16, as we keep growing. And everybody, or almost everybody, would just say no. Very few of them... I have a wonderful anecdote about uh, one of the carriers. They said, no, they said, no, you got to go through another agency. And I'm like, I don't want to go through another agency. I'm going to have a good book of business. I'm going to have a good loss ratio because I have done this before. And I know I want to be part of the profit margin and the contingent commission and all that stuff. And they were like, nope, the rules here, it's in the last five years. Nobody gets a new appointment. You got to go out. I'm like, dang it. So let's just move to the other one and see what happens. I'm on a national meeting. Months, months after that, the rep at that time, it was such a horrible experience. She was very standoffish. You know, she was not nice at all. She was like, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do, blah, blah, blah. 
you're not getting the appointment. That This was the call, literally. I'm like, well, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for listening. That's it. Months later, I'm in a national meeting. And on that national meeting, there was one of the C-level executives from this carrier, right? X carrier. Guy talks to me. We're breaking bed. We're enjoying some wine. We have a wonderful day full of meetings. He asked me, how are things going in Florida? Because we have met before and we have been in, in meetings together. And I'm like, you know, they're good, but I wish I would get you a carrier because you guys are, you know, one of the top in Florida and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, why didn't you get it? I'm like, well, the rep said this. And I never mentioned names or anything. He's like, no, 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 no. no. We need somebody like you in Florida, Ariel. And that comes back to, you know, having a good reputation on that. And I'm like, okay. I come back. He was like, send me an email. When you send me the email uh, on Monday, once we get back to the office, I'm going to look at it and don't worry. I'll see what I can do for you. I can't promise you anything, but I'm almost sure I can help you with this. I'm like, okay, one of the C-level guys again. <laughs> Come back on Monday. I send in the email. Hey, it was great seeing you last week. You know, hope you had a wonderful weekend. This is uh, the information from my new agency in Florida. This is what I would like to do. And he was like, okay, perfect. On Tuesday, I get the call from that rep who doesn't work for that carrier anymore, by the way. It has nothing to do with me. She just, uh, she changed carriers like two years ago. She mm-hmm. calls me up. And she says, I don't know who you are, and I don't care what you are. I'm going to give you the appointment because I just got instructed to give it to you. And I'm like, listen, ma'am, we're going to work together. We're going to be business partners. Why are you giving me this attitude? It's like, I don't care. This is your, you're going to get an email from the onboarding department, blah, blah, blah. Get all that. And we're going to talk uh, a year from now, see your numbers and see if you're good for your work. I'm like, well, thank you very much. Anyway, the wow. year fit, it was horrible. One of the worst experiences that ever. That is terrible. I'm yeah. like, you should never ever even be working in insurance. Um, anyways, right. like a year afterwards, she never called me. She never came back to me asking for numbers or things yeah. like that. She had nothing to say. We were already over $250,000 in premium with that carrier. So I'm like... You know, it was one of those moments where you just want to have a drink, sit down and look at that person in the eye and say, how you like <laughs> I the told apples, you right? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. Isn't that Thank gratifying? You. It is. That it you, is. Get, you get the you finally get the right carrier appointment and boom, you just take off. Yep. yep. That's it's, cool. And that's what it takes. Don't don't be afraid of, you know, taking a chance and, and, and asking for yeah. opportunity. Opportunity might show up whenever you're least expecting it and. Yeah. The rest of the carriers, I can tell you, it was tough. A lot of them did listen to me. They agreed to my in-person meetings, which I love relationship. You know me. I see you. I want to hug you. Sure, it's, sure. A, it's, it's all about the relationship. And if we're going to build it, right. there's gonna, there's, there was a carrier. I could not write almost anything with them. They called me after a year. It was my first time ever. I was devastated. They were like, listen, we're going to have to take the appointment away. You didn't come to the number. And, you, and I said, you know what? Thank you so much for the opportunity. And I know why I didn't hit the numbers because their rates were just like triple everybody else. So there's no way to explain that to a client. Right. I mean, I, as much value as I can uh, as I can add in coverage, if your rate is three times higher, it is what it is. But I never mentioned that because they know it. And I'm like, I'm just they, blessed. Absolutely, they know, yeah. So I'm like, thank you for the opportunity. And, and he was so humble, so nice. We developed a nice relationship. And he was like, I want to talk to you 12 months from now, Ariel. See what's going on. Mm-hmm. And you yep. know what? It's been wonderful. That's a really good story, the one about getting the heart appointment. Oh yeah. And this story and this story because if if those who are listening didn't know before, the insurance industry like most industries are very very cyclical. Up and down, peaks and valleys. I've seen it with carrier after care all carriers. I don't know why it's like that so much, but it it just is. I in all my years in this industry. So, it might be just one difficult employee standing in your way within that carrier and like you say the sea level guy's like oh absolutely we want you but you got one person the right person at the time standing in your way preventing you from getting on board and doing the right things and on the other hand you got a carrier so like uh you know, we know we're three times higher but that still doesn't matter we got to let your appointment go because you didn't produce so what are you going to do? You know what? In a year, he wants to talk to you because, again, he may not even be with a company or the company may be changing. And it's cyclical. In a year, there's so much can change. It's amazing. Would you agree? 
Oh, I agree a hundred percent. And I'll go even a little bit further on this. And, and for every independent agency owner that's listening to the podcast, and I know there's thousands of them, it's don't take it personal. It is what it yeah. is. That person was probably having a good day or a bad day. You never know. Um, you know, like a good friend Scott Howell says all the time, maybe she ate a bad piece of pizza. The problem with her, right. she was consistently bad. <laughs> uh, she was consistently standoffish. And it, it's, it's frustrating. She just ate it, a lot of bad pizza. A lot of bad all the time. She should just drop the pizza forever. <laughs> At the end of the day, you still want to do the business with the carrier. And just because of that one bad apple, it doesn't happen. Um, right. One of the things that impressed me most about the appointments and the process and the reps, whenever I see a carrier rep that just stands out, they sometimes look at me or, or, they, or they email me or call me. It's like, that's a very weird thing. I'm like, I will tell them. You are just awesome. And I hope you forward this email to your bosses because you go the extra mile for us. You're always available. You're just amazing. The reason I do that is because that's only the, those are the outliers. That's probably the 5% of them. The rest of them, I was so impressed in Florida, coming from Puerto Rico, where they will go the extra mile, most of them, and do a lot for us. In Florida, it impressed me the reps. They don't give you access to the carriers. I mean, to the underwriters, number one. So that just freaked me out. I even tweeted about that and it went a little bit viral because <laughs> I'm like, if you're a carrier and your agencies, which are your partners, you don't give them access to your underwriters, you're just destined to fail. You are destined to fail. We need to have yeah, a conversation sure. every now and then. And I would have reps saying, I'm asking a question that was a water damage claim, blah, 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 but it was incorrectly rated. If the system doesn't allow you to quote, their email, because I don't even call you. If the system doesn't allow you to quote, it is what it is. Move to another carrier. Don't place the business here. I'm like, can I talk to someone? No, you cannot. Can you help me with something? No, there's nothing else I can do for you. I'm like, what is wrong with you people? That's I not know, supposed how reps are supposed to work. And what I pisses know. me off is like, even when we ask them something about coverage or things like that, a lot of them don't have an idea about it. And I know the answer because either I research it or I learn it through my designation, which is a whole different story. Go out, study, get educated, get designations. They are worth it. A hundred percent worth it. And if you ever wonder why, ask somebody like David Carathers. He'll tell you why they're worth it. But I still like to corroborate. And I say, thank you for your guidance. Can you help me with this question? No, I cannot. I don't know the answer. Can you connect me with somebody in underwriting? No, I cannot. I'm like, what are you here for then? Just to ask me about my numbers, you can get those in your system. And, you know, so that that right. has been such a, I don't know if I should call it a cultural challenge, but to be completely honest, it's been frustrating every now and then because I thought you're here to help me. So let's build a relationship. Mm -hmm. Let's sit down, have coffee, let's have lunch. I have one of my reps, we have lunch, and she was like, I want to have lunch with you every month. And I'm like, why? Nobody does lunch mm -hmm. like you. You sit down, you talk, you enjoy a beer or, or a soda or whatever you want to drink, but just have the conversation. This is not about sitting down, give me your number, this is what's going on, bye. No, build right. a relationship and, and specifically that rep that did that with me, I was like, listen, you're amazing. And she didn't know that I knew her boss, who's a really good close friend of mine, and he's the head right. of that carrier for the agency development. And I reach out to him and I say, you know what? This lady, this woman is just amazing. So you guys better do everything in your power to keep her. And they were super thankful that I did that. Yeah, again, for I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying I'm a title teller or anything. It's just that well, we, ha we have to too, be thankful. Too many times you only hear about the bad. So it's really good to share the good for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. let me. You brought up a few times um, that you're... Um, teaching and doing uh, some education with the um, the National Alliance. How did you get involved in doing that? So that was done originally through PIA Puerto Rico. So when I was, okay. I was blessed enough, again, it's, it's, it's been, I've been very blessed in my life with many good things and some bad ones, but mostly good things. When I was back in Puerto Rico, I was 25 years old. I started getting involved with PIA because I learned about um, what you do here, right? Getting involved in organizations will help you grow your career and then in, especially in insurance if you're going to write commercial special which was that's my bread and butter in puerto rico we used to write condos hospitals and all that 
you got to get educated. You got to go and study. So I got the CIC designation and I got a little bit involved with the National Alliance. And all of a sudden, PIA Puerto Rico, their educational committee reached out to me and they said, would you like to teach the CISR, which is the Certified Insurance Service Representative Program? And I said, yeah, submitted my documents, submitted my bio. Little I knew I was 26 year old and I started teaching. So the most at twenty six, you're at like twenty six. What, what can yeah. I teach people? <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Uh, but right. one thing I knew for sure, because when I was growing the agency from twenty two to twenty six, what do you have? Very little clients, right? You don't have much. Yeah, I right. sat down like a freaking nerd, and I took my CIC. I read all those policies, and every time I had a new client, I would go and read the whole thing. So if you don't have anything to do, don't just sit down and watch Netflix, study and right. read about it. Right. And I just became very passionate about that. So when I started teaching, I combined my experience in terms of, you know, my client. This is what happened to me with the technical knowledge about that. And the National Alliance was super kind enough to trust in me. So I started teaching the CISR program. I think I've been teaching it for 13, 14 years now. I don't know. And then through PIA Puerto Rico and then again through the National Alliance, I got involved in teaching, uh, teaching you know, other programs like the William T. Hold and things like that. Then after that, I started teaching the CPIA designation, which is the Certified Professional Insurance Agent one. That was AIMS. Right. That is now part of PIA. They got merged. Right. Um, PIA National. So one of the things I found out, it's number one, you got to study. You got to get your designations. The designation is not about the letters after your name because they look pretty. Almost no client will ask you about what does that mean, right? It's no. about the knowledge you acquire to provide your client with the best insurance program that, that you can find for him. The knowledge you acquire to explain your client coverages, right? Risk management, many other things. I'm only one course away from my CRM. So, I mean, I, I'm... Awesome. Huge in education. I love it and I encourage everyone to do it because, and by the way, if you can teach it as well, every time I see somebody that I think they can teach it, I'm like, you got to go teach it. Because one of the most rewarding things in life is when you teach people what you know, you learn much more from them. So if I'm teaching a class, there's 80 people in there, I'm learning so much from everyone. Of course, there's always the, the guy that knows everything better than everyone and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. When I was young, sure. I used to be afraid and I was like, oh, what if this guy who's the big guru or whatever feels threatened or he doesn't like me? You know what? I learned throughout the years. This is something experience and maturity gives you. If you think what I'm teaching is not valuable, then you stand up here and you do it yourself, right? So that, that's my only mentality. You come up here and you do it. So I still get nervous when I teach. When I spoke with you guys at IOA in, in, in San Diego, my first one, three minutes, I always get a little bit, you know, we all do. It's natural. And when you, when I always, I learned from my wife, she always taught me, don't worry about that, Ariel. When you're speaking, doing a keynote, or when you're teaching, if you get a little bit nervous at first, it just means you care. It just means you care. What you're going to teach, yep, you care about absolutely. the people. And I learned so much from everyone. I can teach as much as I can learn, even in a Zoom class. So... Yeah, when I go to start teaching for the either National Alliance or AIMS or I have my own courses also. I have a social media one, I have a which is a best practices. Um, I have a disaster preparedness. I have a, another one that it's called it's the little things that matter. So when, even when I teach my own courses, I just share everything with everyone. And I try to integrate. That's cool. The participant like Dave, I know you're very involved in this and that. Show me, tell me about your experience so everybody else can learn from that. So it's, uh, yeah. it's very rewarding. It takes time, but it's very for rewarding. Sure, for sure. Have you ever authored a book? You know what? No, that's my, one of my dreams. Um, I want to do it. Is it? Me, it's, me too. I've, I've only done ebooks. I've never authored a true book. A true book. I, so I, I, it's on my wish list. Okay. So I have one. I have the title already. And I will tell okay. you, I have at least, a hundred pages of talking points. Um, and it's a little bit of my history mixed with the industry, mixed with different things, but I want to make it whenever I make it, um, which is my goal for the next five years. I have to make it sometime in the next five years. 
I want to make okay. sure it's interesting enough that people feel comfortable reading it. They get a lot of value in it, but they also enjoy it, right? And, and sure, they have sure. a, a lot of story to tell about, you know, the, the things I have overcome. When we went through Hurricane Maria and I had to hide in my daughter's bathroom in there with my whole family, right? Because you're getting 180 miles our winds who broke the window in my master bedroom and the wind is coming but then the aftermath of that right and then what happened what are the struggles we all encounter so yeah it's a it's 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 on my bucket list um and i don't i don't want to cool. say it's a dream because i want to do it but it's a dream i want to make a reality so. is it too early to share the title of your book um, it's, it's, it's a little bit early. Uh, okay. I, will, I can okay. tell you, I can, I can share it, even though somebody copies it, it's still evidence that I still have it. It's called how insurance broke my heart. And it oh, all goes, okay. it all goes down to the insurance industry. What happened? How I got very sick. You know, I have high blood pressure, mm -hmm. kind of like a mini stroke and many other things when I was in my thirties. Um, and oh, then right. how, how I recovered from all that to where we are today. Right. So yeah, well, it should, should you, be interesting. It should be. I'm looking forward to it. Will you retire in the insurance industry? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. There's nothing. I think I, I might too. Oh, I can. Yeah. I, you're not going anywhere. I, and even if you want to go, we're not letting you go anywhere. Um, well, I yeah. don't. I don't. I don't even see myself retiring. I just enjoy working. So that's that's my problem. I learned at a very age. My my when. I think it was my third or fourth year at the agency in Puerto Rico. I share, we share a co-working space with other agencies. Um, mm -hmm. And it was like four or five of us. One of them was a guy, uh, this gentleman in his 70s. And he was like, I'm not retiring. And that guy hustled hard. I mean, harder than I could ever see anyone hustle. And he was like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, dude, but I want to retire. And he was like, no, why should you retire? You can make money for life. This is passive income. Even if you want to want to work too much because you want to go play golf, just hire somebody. Make sure the book is renewed, um, you know, or you can sell the agency or whatever. But I only I tell people it's not the only thing I know. But in reality, the only thing I know how to do is insurance. And, and my goal in life is to help as many people as I can in many different ways. It could be by selling that person or, or advising that person towards their insurance program. Or it could be by helping you and your agency establishing a life insurance and short deck that will help you guys grow. So I don't see myself doing anything outside of the insurance industry. I have taken different roads, um, just like you did. You do, you have your agency, but you have IOA or also and many other things. Um, but yeah, when I created fun with fun insurance solutions, my goal is to have it in perpetuity. To where I can help people even when I'm in my 70s or in my 80s. Yeah, um, that's very cool because you're giving back. As much as I can, yep. Yeah, that's very cool. So um, one of the last questions I have, I have a fun one for you. Uh, right now, as you sit here today, what is the most used app on your phone? Oh, uh, if I have well, Let's to say be... most favorite, most favorite. All right, so most favorite... I would say probably, well, Slack, but Slack is for work. So let's just, I'm going to remove work mm -hmm. once, um, you know, okay. we, which we use Slack. Slack is cool though. Yeah. Slack is cool. Slack is a Slack. messaging app. Just so you know, you can message teams and individual yeah. create groups and it's a messaging app that you can use on mobile or desktop and it, yeah. and it's work. It works great. Yep. And, and Slack, just so people know, it's uh, basically if you use Microsoft Teams, that's a copy paste of Slack. So Slack's been going on forever, yeah. ever since before Microsoft yeah. Teams was even invented. Um, and that's yeah. where we manage the agency communication, right? Because I can be everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And all I look at is on my Slack because I know that's where the important things come. Um, yep. But anyways, I would say my number one and number two. Number one, it's WhatsApp. Uh, if you guys don't know okay. what, what WhatsApp is. And I'll tell you the reason why. WhatsApp, it's uh, it's owned by Facebook now. Um, right. It, the rest of the world, except almost the U.S., the mainland, right? But the rest of the world mostly communicates via text message through WhatsApp. The reason mm -hmm. being is WhatsApp, you can use it even if there's no signal, but you still have Wi-Fi. 
So I went on a cruise. I had no signal. I had Wi-Fi. You can make calls. You can do video calls. You can do everything. So coming from Puerto Rico, we're huge. And, and you can go anywhere in the world. And almost people from India does the same, um, Argentina and all that. You can communicate with anybody in the world. And you can create group chats. So I have a group chat with my ex-baseball team. I have a group chat with my in-laws. I have a group chat with my family. I have a group chat with my father and my brother. You know, you create all these group chats and WhatsApp lets you send unlimited pictures, videos, and things like that. So it's actually even, it's better than anything iPhone or, or Android can create. Um, so I would say that's my favorite one because at the end of the day, I always take at least 30 minutes to an hour to look at what my sister wrote, my brother wrote. And then, you know, that's how you stay in touch with the family every day. Mm -hmm. And you don't even have to pick up the phone. Yeah. My yeah, num that's my cool. That's very cool. Yeah. My number two, I would love to say, well, sports, ESPN and all that stuff. Um, but in terms of things that I love to do and entertain myself with, the, whenever I have a little bit of time, uh, Canva. So every now and then I get an idea about something I want to post on social media. I go to Canva, create it real quick, and then, which is most of the time is after I do my morning exercise. I come back to my house. I sit down. I'm like, oh, shoot, because I read a book or listen to your podcast or something. I would say, oh, I have this great idea. Let me post this. And then I just go into Canva and do it on the cell phone real quick. So, yeah, but I would say yeah, number one is WhatsApp. Cool. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's awesome. Well, Ariel, I want to thank you for being with us today. Uh, our listeners are going to really enjoy your story. Uh, I appreciate you sharing it. Thank you so much for being on with us. And thank you, thank uh, I'm you. sure I will see you somewhere down the road in person again. I look forward yes. to it. Oh, yeah. Hopefully I'll be there at IOA. Um, it's going to be a fun one. And I want to thank mm -hmm. you for inviting me and having me. More importantly, You're very for welcome. your leadership. Um, again, as I said at the beginning, people don't realize how much work and love and passion you put into what you do and you created something special. So always be proud of it. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to CollabCast with IAOA with Captain Dave Jackson. Production and distribution by Podsquad.fm, Riverside.fm, and Spotify for podcasters. Special thanks to Little Dog Social Media, Terry Champion, and all our guests and listeners. If you're an independent insurance agency owner, please subscribe to our podcast weekly. You can also request to join our agency owner exclusive Facebook group, IAOA or Insurance Agency Owners Alliance at IAOA.com. Captain Dave Jackson signs out from sunny Hendersonville, Tennessee.